think of California, I think of beaches and sunshine. When I think of California, I think of sun, beaches, and babes. I think of the ocean and the beach. When I think of Long Beach, I think of the port and the ships. When I think of Long Beach, no offense, I think it's a bit ghetto. I think of uh, the Cambodia town. Snoop Dogg thing too. I don't think of Long Beach as a place to hang out at the beach. I think of Long Beach as a place to come and do other stuff, you know, check out the bars. Um, there's, there's usually a fence down here. Like... The water quality in Long Beach is, I would say, poor. I tend to see a lot of trash and stuff. When I see all that, kind of, kind of trips me out, you know. Stuff, oil leaking, I don't know. Who knows? And then also the, the rivers, you know, stuff running in, and then you get all the refinery over there, right? And you see the rivers right next to it, and, stuff, and it's all connected to this. Long Beach in Southern California has a waterfront often called the Riviera of the West. Long Beach has one of the largest and most beautiful marinas in the world. This entire area used to be mud flats, unused, unattractive, and unproductive. Now, almost 3,000 boats enjoy the safe, fully developed harbor. My name is Robert Palmer. I'm the current chairman of the Long Beach Chapter of Surfrider Foundation. I got started in this back in August of 1996 when an editor of the local press telegram wrote a series of articles on the breakwater. His research uncovered the facts that our water quality is very, very poor right now because of the breakwater. We don't get circulation in here. I knew that Long Beach didn't have waves at the time. You know, I wasn't that concerned about it until summer. My daughter at the time was like seven years old and we hadn't taken her to the beach and she was out in the water for no more than 20 minutes and she came back and she had two plastic bags wrapped around her legs. And that was a personal thing. What are the main focuses like right now? Like is it the breakwater, 80%, <coughs> styrofoam like 20% or is it all mixed in? Like I would say the breakwater has been our main focus for 16 years. Not everybody is like gung ho sink the breakwater like we are. So there's other programs that, that people can get involved in. We did an uh, ongoing thing where we got rid of, we banned plastic bags in the city of Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you guys part of that? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You guys kinda were the leaders we're of that? Yeah, that's we're right. Really we went to all of the city council meetings. When they voted to do it, I was like, wow, how we did that. We can do anything if we can do that. Next month, and we just while I'm out there picking up trash, there's it, several people that will stop me and ask me where can I go to find waves, and they're they're from out of town. I can tell by their accent. They're either foreign people or they have like an eastern accent or a southern accent. They're on vacation, and they're here in Long Beach, and that's all the beach that they've been able to find. And I'm sending them off down south or up north. The tourists come, and that's they want great waves. Point. I can only imagine how excited the community would uh, would be in, in support to jump on board with this idea. Well, we're just more informed. Yeah. And I most think, of, you know, the car, beach, there's sure. certain sections that don't want it. Yeah. People on the peninsula don't want it. Yeah. If I had to describe it, it's become more of a jihad or a holy war of taking down the breakwater. Uh, the original goal, as we'll see in here, was to surf. Uh, then in order to um, make it a, 
more public, they had to expand it, so they expanded. And in doing so, they, they played a little bit of uh, uh, loose with facts, history, and whatnot. We don't have any argument about the origin of Long Beach, its popularity. It was the queen of beaches. It was the place in its time. Uh, they had surfing contests in the, in the uh, late 30s, and of course they used those as a major example of what Long Beach should be. But we have to think about, is that still there? We need the timing is critical. Um, when was the breakwater built? The first section, 1898 to 1912. The second section, 1915 to 1940. The Long Beach breakwater was built for the Navy in the 1940s. Um, the Navy was looking for a new place to build a naval shipyard and a naval base. They uh, started working on plans for building a breakwater to entice the Navy to move here. It was started before World War II, stopped during the war, and finished from 1946 to 49. And Long Beach has not had waves since. There's been a tremendous interest uh, from members of the public in answering once and for all whether there's a way to reconfigure the breakwater to allow for a small amount of wave action uh, to our beaches. Uh, I think if there's a way to do that safely without impacting the homes, on the peninsula and without impacting the trade and commerce for the Port of Long Beach, then uh, that would be a very good thing for our city. It is simply a first step in what would be a multi-year, multi-step process in uh, seeing if we might alter the breakwater. Without studying history, you'd say this beautiful beach, but you're only taking a certain segment of time, say uh, early 1900s, and you're leaving out all the 30s and the 40s when the beach basically had disappeared. Now this is 1926, we're looking, um, that's, about, that's the Villa Riviera, uh, and, and there is no beach. Uh, the water's banging right up against the shoreline. We see a series of groins out, trying to collect whatever sand. Now, the peninsula, uh, they saw it coming. Uh, they noticed early, fairly early, that there was a problem coming. So in 1927, they built a seawall out in front to help protect the homes. Whereas they don't, they don't have one here where they got destroyed. This happened right before the breakwater was built, 1939. Uh, there were houses and businesses all along here that got wiped out. You have to pick between building it for the Navy, which doesn't figure, as opposed to protecting a huge amount of area and billions of dollars worth of property. If you're afraid of it, then why move here? You know, why, why set up a, a shack on the beach if you're afraid that the, you're going to get flooding? If you're going to live in Oklahoma, you're going to have to what? You're going to have to deal with tornadoes. There's a certain risk factor in it, you know? I mean, it's part of life. When we were doing the reconnaissance study, Moffat Nichols did um, uh, outreach groups in the community, and Preston was at a couple of those, and so was I. I mean, we talked to one another. I mean. I mean, as a human being, he's a fine person, you know. We just disagree on, on the breakwater issue, and we agree to disagree. <laughs> there is a multi-step process uh, when determining um, any type of modification to a federal structure, such as the Army Corps of Engineers breakwater. Uh, this, this structure is determined, uh, this structured process is there to determine if there's federal interest to pursue the project and to determine the project's cost and its benefits. It's a three-step process that uh, contains a reconnaissance study first, then a feasibility study, and then finally pre-construction engineering and construction. So this is the re reconnaissance study that we did that was ultimately titled the East San Pedro Bay Ecosystem Restoration Study. And so this is the, the kind of the, the work product 
if you will, that came out of it, and this is something that's available from the city's website. The beach was very, very narrow. There was hardly any beach. They had a lot of flooding problems down there. So one of the things that, that, that reduced that was the breakwater. That wasn't the intent of it, but it did stabilize the shoreline along there. And there is a chronic erosion problem at the east end, um, which could be made worse, but also, you know, some, some op you know, offered the opinion that if the breakwater was reconfigured, maybe that would let some more wave energy that would actually push some of that sand back to the east and balance that out a little bit more, which is a, could be a potential benefit. Um, people go out and look at the breakwater and you just see this, this rock structure that looks like it's about 20 feet wide on the surface. But then it goes down this, and at the bottom, it's like about 150 feet wide. So it's, it's a massive, massive structure. And you think of the, you know, the, the money and effort. I mean, you think of how hard it was to build it, but then what about actually to remove it? In 2007, the city council authorized a $100,000 study, an internal study, to determine whether or not um, we could convince the Army Corps of Engineers and Congress to look at our breakwater as a significant project. Um, as we all know, um, we received um, correspondence from the Army Corps of Engineers yesterday letting us know that they certainly do believe that this would be a, um, a project that would be, um, they would have interest from the federal government to pursue. Okay, were these uh, note sheets available? You yeah, mentioned it. I um, contacted Tom Modica uh, mm -hmm. and um, I asked him what the update was or if there was anything happening with the Army Corps and he says that he expects um, uh, an update from them, you know, any day now. In fact, he may have an agenda item for this coming Tuesday's City Council meeting. We need to find out what that update is to, you know, help us plan what we're going to do to, you know, either lobby the Army Corps or lobby City Hall or lobby the feds on, on, on how we can push this forward. Uh, sand replenishment, and I know Gary, I think Gary would agree, is a, is a huge issue out on the end of the peninsula. Listen, I walk out there on the weekends. I, I was there last night on the water, um, so I'm very familiar with that, on the ocean side specifically. Could we uh, attempt to incorporate this in, 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 in the issue because I think people th feel threatened because the sand is, uh, you know, is, is so close to homes at, at certain times during the season there. And in fact, we spent about 400000 a year of city money lifting up sand at the foot of the, the, the Belmont Pier there, Veterans Pier, and moving it down to the end of the peninsula. the problem with changing anything. I mean, we've got problems that right now that we can't handle. So now let's open it up to a whole new set of problems that we have no idea what they're going to be, and we can't even handle the ones we have now. Chris, could you shut down the music for a minute? Sure. Don't want a little jazz in the background? Always is nice. <laughs> okay, does every place have to have oh, surf? I mean, well, I don't want to have to drive to Seal Beach or, or Huntington Beach to surf. That's not a great reason in order to take down the breakwater just so a few people can have surf and limited access. Reasons why we have what we have now is this feeding the feeding the, the lions type of thing. Whenever we put more sand out there, it comes in and just chews it right up. So we stand now at a kind of an impasse as what to do. We have these trucks bringing down sand and all in this berm, and it's what we have. Hello. Where'd you find that? Over there, in the waves. Well, yeah, yeah, it was in the surf, and it was just bobbing around, so it's so. Back in the 1940s, they didn't do an environmental impact report when they were planning to build this thing. So the bottom line on it is we have 40 plus cities upstream from San Pedro Bay here that 
have storm runoff that goes into the, uh, the gutters, it goes into the LA River and it dumps out here completely untreated. We've, when we first got started on this back in 1996, people just said that, you know, surf rider, huh, you guys are just too lazy to get in your car and drive to Huntington Beach. You want waves here. You're just too lazy. You know, well, that's not what it's about. It's about the environment. It's about doing what's right. I was just kind of wondering what you expect for the city council meeting tomorrow. Well, I'm excited moving forward, but then, you know, I don't know what to expect tomorrow night. Mr. Mayor, council members, we have a quick report on the San Pedro Bay Ecosystem Restoration Feasibility Study. Tonight we are further than many ever predicted we would be but not as far as we want to be. Our effort to secure clean water and a better local economy march forward by approving the Army Corps 3 by 3 protocol for the Bright Water Study. And I want to reaffirm this, and that is our commitment to protect the trunk property and maritime trade. That's absolutely our commitment, thus the purpose of the study. So this is a good thing. This is a good thing for Long Beach. This is uh, an opportunity for us to secure clean water and again, a better local economy. I believe the figure put when we did the reconnaissance study uh, through the federal government was a $52 million annual stimulus if we could clean our water and produce some more recreational opportunity along our beach fronts. Can I be Council member, any public comment on this If Just a formula. So modifying a section of the breakwater, if it doesn't work, will be hard to repair or replace. I support uh, any any uh, activity that involves restoring our beaches. The city is called Long Beach, and for too many years now, uh, we have not had any clean beaches. And that just doesn't make sense. So there's a motion. We've got a little comment. Members, go ahead and please cast your votes. Motion carries 7-0. But you, you asked me before, you know, what motivates me to keep doing this? I mean, I love coming to the beach. I was a kid from the Midwest. You know, I grew up, you know, in a small little farm rural town in, in northern Illinois. And, you know, coming here when I was 19 years old, you know, I came for a two-week vacation and I never went back. Do you think it's really going to happen, Your Honor? I mean, oh, the uh, reconfiguring the breakwater? Yeah. yeah. If I have to go out there and do it myself, <laughs> it will happen. I don't think we need to spend $3 million to, to find it out. I'd rather see that go to actually doing something rather than going into somebody's pocket if they came back with a conclusion, it would be clean up the river. Well, we know that. That's maybe one of the problems with government. They're going to study something that doesn't need to be studied. Just common sense will tell you. The peninsula has waves. You know, the, the peninsula folks, they can, they can go take a stroll on their beach and they can listen to the surf. You know, we can't hear. It's dead. It's dead. And everything that's out there is dead. You know, if you if you dredge in the ocean, the, the ocean floor right off of our beach here, it's a black, goopy yuck. And there's, you know, and there's there's signs posted on the pier that basically says, telling uh, fishermen, you know, don't eat the fish you catch off of here. You know, that's disgusting. You know, how can somebody, you know, stand in the way of restoring this, restoring the environment. You know, it doesn't make any sense at all. You know, uh, so, yeah. If, if what we're doing here can bring back the wave someday and, and help revive this beach, um, it's all worth it.